So we're asked what is the horizontal reaction force at each wall under the loading shown, the dimensions of each section are shown in the diagram, and the whole component is made from the same material. So I'm going to start this off by drawing the free body diagram of the overall member. I should then be able to apply my equilibrium equations to be able to develop relationships between the forces on the diagram. So let me draw a smaller version. So on this free body diagram, we're going to have the four externally applied forces. So we've got the 10 and the other 10. Then we've got the 18 and the other 18. Now we're told to look for the horizontal reaction forces at each of the wall. So obviously if this bar is for exerting a force onto the wall, the wall is going to be exerting a force back onto the bar. So I'm going to guess the direction on this end is to the right, sorry, left. <laughs> And on this end, I'm going to guess it's back this way. The reason is, it kind of looks like this, uh, these two forces are going to push it into the wall, so this needs to push back. Similarly here, this is going to push into the wall, so this needs to push back. Of course, if you get the directions um, wrong, it will just come out negative in your answers, and you'll know to flip over the arrow. So now that we've got our free body diagram, we should be able to develop an equation. And we're going to get that from our horizontal forces needing to be in equilibrium. So we're going to have Ra in the positive direction. We've got two 10 kilonewton forces, um, which are pushing back to the left. And just to be safe, I'm going to put them into newtons. And we're going to have two 18 kilonewton forces. Again, I'm going to put it into newtons. Um, pushing to the right, and we've got our reaction force Rd has to be equal to zero. So if I make this look a little bit nicer, I'm going to get Ra on this side. These numbers here, this is negative 20,000 plus 36,000. So that's going to be the same as plus 16,000. And we're going to get minus Rd is equal to zero. So there's not too much we can do at this point. Of course, Ra and Rd are what we need to answer this question. However, because we have two unknowns and only one equation, um, we're going to need to go ahead and find a second equation to be able to solve uh, simultaneously. So I'm going to call this one equation one, and now I'm going to work on getting the second equation from the compatibility conditions. So my condition for this case is going to be that since these walls appear fixed, so they can't move in their position, um, if we have any change in the length of these components, it's going to need to be compensated for by the other sections. So for example, if this part in here contracts in its length, this part here is going to need to extend in order to compensate. So if I write this as an equation for compatibility, I'm going to have that the um, axial deformation through AB plus the axial deformation through section BC plus the axial deformation through this last one, CD, has to be equal to zero. That's telling me that if one extends, the other one is going to contract in order to yeah, compensate. So I'm going to replace each of these with the PL on AE notation. So let's go ahead and sub that in. Um, BC. So, in order to fill in this equation, um, what I'm going to need to do is work out the internal load for each section, so the P in each of these. Now, when I do that, what I should find is that I end up with the RD and the RA inside my equation, and then this one should be able to be solved simultaneously with this one. So, let's go ahead and cut each of our sections in order to work out these internal loads. Just a reminder that this is points A, B, C, and D. So let's start with looking at section AB. So I need to perform a cut through that section and I need to redraw the free body diagram of either the left or the right hand side. So I think taking the left is a little bit easier. So I'm going to have RA and I'm also going to have the force that I need to replace at the cut. So I think it's going to be back this way. This is PAB. And we need to have our um, body in equilibrium. So the sum of the forces in the x direction have to be zero. 
So PAB is going to have to be equal to the reaction force on that end. And we can see that this is pushing onto the member, so it represents a compression section. So let's move on to the next section, which is BC. And this time again, we need to take a cut through that section. So that's going to be through here. And we can draw either the left or the right hand side. I'm going to pick the left hand side again. So transferring over our external forces, we have this RA on the end. We have the two 10 kilonewton forces. And then at the cut, we need to replace it with the internal load within our member. And I'm going to say it's going this direction because that's going to put it in tension. And it kind of looks like this one's going to go this way. This one's going to go this way. So this member is going to get stretched and put into tension. So I'll call this PBC. So summing forces to be equal to zero, we're going to have RA minus these two forces. Now, just to be safe again, I'm going to put everything into base units. So that's in newtons. And then we have plus PBC. So on its own, this is going to be equal to 20,000. It swings to the other side and minus RA. So the only other thing we need to consider is the direction. And we said this is going to be in tension. All right, so final section, and that is CD. All right, so again, we need to perform a cut through the section, something like this. And we have a choice of taking the left or the right hand side again. Now, I know that there's only one force on the right hand side here, so it would be pretty straightforward to draw the free body diagram. But I'm actually going to take the left hand side again. The reason is I'm going to then have my force internally in terms of RA, and I'm going to have then all three in terms of RA. So it's going to make it a little bit easier when we go to solve this equation because it's not going to become true simultaneous equations. It's going to be a little bit easier than that. But it will work equally well um, if you take the right hand side. Um, it's just, yeah, you've got a little bit more tricky algebra in terms of solving these two equations. So if I redraw just the left here, and taking across the external forces, and I need to replace at the cut here with the internal force within my member. I'm going to guess it's going this way. Um, this is PCD. The reason I've guessed this way is it's putting it in compression because um, it's pushing onto my member. And I said before that I thought this one was going to get shorter in its length. So that's why I'm drawing it that way. So when we sum forces, we're going to have RA minus these two, which is uh, 2 times 10,000 plus these, which is 2 times 18,000 and then minus PCD. So solving for PCD on its own, I'm going to shift it to the other side. So it's going to become RA, and putting these two things together, it's going to be 16,000. So we said that this component here, um, or this section here, is in compression. All right, so all of that effort was to work out the internal forces P for each of the sections, and now we can go back and try and substitute our stuff into this equation here. So this here is PAB. We've just solved that in terms of RA, so I'm going to substitute that in. I need to multiply it by the length of my um, AB section, and if I go up here, that was equal to 1 meter. I then need to divide by my cross-sectional area, which is going to be pi on 4 times the diameter squared, and our diameter was zero, uh, sorry, 100 millimeters, which is the same as 0 0.1 in meters. And again, I'm being safe by uh, converting everything into the same base units. I then need to multiply it by the Young's modulus, but we were given um, a piece of information that said that every single part of our component is made from the same material. So that's gonna mean that there's no variance in Young's modulus across the three different sections. And therefore, E here, E here, and E here are all equal to each other. So if I multiply everything by, by that value of E, they're all going to disappear from the equation. 
equals 0 times e is also equal to 0. So these are all cancelling with each other and I don't need to worry about them. So now the only thing that's left for this term is thinking about whether it should be positive or negative and that's based on whether it's in compression or tension. Here we've got it in compression so it needs to go in as a negative because it's going to be getting shorter. So moving on to the next one which is the section BC. We worked out that the internal force was equal to this. And we need to multiply by the length of BC. And from here, we can see that it's uh, 0.5 meters. Remember also the diameter is 80. So we can put that in as well. It's the same as 0.08. So we've then got to think about the direction. This is in tension, so it's going to be positive when it goes into the equation. So finally, we just need to do the section uh, CD on the end here. So we said the force is equal to this. It's multiplied by the length of this part. And again, we're given that to be 1.2 meters. The diameter is also 0.1 of a meter. And sorry, we need to multiply it by pi on four to make it the area of the circle. So finally, we've said that this part is in compression, so that's going to mean it needs to go inside here as a negative value. And on the other side of the equation, we have that it's equal to zero. So you can see now, hopefully, I've ended up with just RA as the unknown in the equation. And that's why I um, ended up taking the left-hand side of this diagram, just to eliminate one of the variables. So now it just becomes a case of needing to solve for RA, and it's a little bit tedious um, in terms of the algebra. So one thing that you can do to make it easier is you've ended up with pi on four in every single term. So if you multiply that by that, sorry, you're gonna end up it canceling because again, on the other side, when you multiply by pi on four, zero times pi on four is still zero. And then it's just a case of trying to expand out all your brackets Put everything with RA on one side, everything without on the other, and then you should be able to solve for it. So this here, um, 1 divided by um, 0.1 squared um, becomes 100, and it's negative RA. So simplifying these, this term here, um, we're going to get 20,000 times 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.08 squared, which becomes a 1.56. Uh, sorry, I'll put in the extra um, numbers, 65 by 10 to the power of 6. And then with the RA part, expanding the bracket, this is going to become negative 0.5 RA divided by 0 0.08, which is the same as negative 78.175 RA. Moving on to this last term here, expanding this bracket, it's going to be RA times 1.2 divided by 0.1 squared, and we have a negative at the front. So it becomes negative 120 RA. We've then got 16,000 times 1.2 divided by 0.1 squared. Again, with the negative out the front that gets multiplied in. So it becomes negative 1.92 by 10 to the power of 6. So if I put everything with RA onto the other side of the equation, um, I end up with 298.125 RA. So that's combining this term, this term, and this term. I've got two constants as well left on the other side, and they simplify to this, Oop, extra zero. So finally, when I go ahead and solve for RA, I end up with a value that's actually negative of 1199, and it's going to be in newtons because that was the base unit. So this has come out negative, which is actually quite interesting. So it tells us that we had the direction incorrect to begin with. So if we scroll back up, that's going to mean on our free body diagram, RA is actually to the left. Now, I guess the reasoning behind that is because these two 18 kilonewton forces are so strong that um, this whole section, these two different parts, are getting pulled to the right hand side. So in order to keep this against the wall, it then needs to be a force pulling it back, okay? And that's why RA is actually in the other direction. So all that's left to do now um, is to work out what RD is, and we have this other equation that we developed um, to be able to do that, and we can solve it simultaneously. 
So it's just a case of rearranging for RD and substituting RA in. Now remember that we developed this equation when RA was pointed to the right hand side, which is consistent with the negative value for RA. So we need to make sure we substitute RA in as the negative when we're using this. So if we start with writing out the equation, so it's RA plus the 16,000 minus RD is equal to zero. So RD on its own is going to be the other two added together. Substituting in, now I said this corresponds to the negative value because that's what it, the direction it was drawn when I developed the equation. So I end up with a final value for RD of 14801 newtons. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go back and correct my free body diagram that I had at the start. So actually, we said that RA was the other way. And we said that it was equal to 1199. And this one was the correct direction since it came out positive. And this is 14801 newtons. So that's all that's left um, for this question. And I will see you in a different video.